Welcome back to Bill's Aunt Projects this weekend. We're back on the weekend. Yeah, video's coming out this weekend. So we're gonna be back on this this weekend. We're gonna be uh, throwing some new struts in it, maybe. First, we're gonna see if we can uh, maybe rebuild these ones. Not sure, they're really just kind of sloppy. There's no oil left in them, it feels like. The valving is either screwed or there's no oil left in them. So we're gonna see if we can take these apart and put oil in them. If not, we'll order some new ones and uh, put some new ones in. So we're gonna be doing that. We're also waiting on some new tires to show up. So we'll be throwing some new tires on the front and hopefully then we can eventually start building steering and stuff. But I just wanna make sure tires are gonna clear on here with steering angle and whatnot. So we went with a little bit smaller size. So. Make sure if you haven't, you go check out buildsnotprojects.com. Uh, try to buy you some merch. We've had one person order off of our website. Um, the rest of you guys are kind of lame, calling everybody out right now. Um, we're also gonna be having a bunch of new merch hitting the website probably in the next week or two, just kind of depending on when it rolls in. Um, so make sure you uh, keep an eye out for that. Smells like bee spray. I have no idea why, but uh, it's kind of interesting. Anyways, yep, these things are not rebuildable. They're completely sealed. I was really hoping there was gonna be a nut or something on the bottom so we could take these apart and just add some uh, shock oil, but no such luck. So luckily I can buy these things. So we ordered some, we'll slap them in. So we finally got some uh, new parts for the mower. These are the new struts for the front so we'll get those things swapped in um for those of you interested in boxes this is the box that came in and this box as well with some nice paper you know don't worry we got two so we'll get these bad boys swapped in here and then uh hopefully the front suspension isn't all floppy anymore Never been paid in a sitting in some tall pine trees. Uh, yeah, I think it does. Unpacking. Wow, look at these beautiful tires that were inside that lovely packaging. Are we gonna start doing unboxing videos now? Uh. I thought I thought we were above that. Yeah, I mean, since it didn't actually come in a box, is it an unboxing video? Uh, let us know in the comments. You might be wondering why we're doing new tires when these beautiful tires are in such good condition. Um, but these are a 20 by six by 10 tire, while these are a 22 seven ten tire. Um, so the new tires are gonna be two inches shorter and then an inch narrower, still going on the same seven inch wide wheel, I think. Uh, no, it's a six wide wheel. So they, uh, hopefully these tires clear the tubing on the front of the mower if you've been following along with the mower build previously, the tires would hit. Um, so hopefully these ones don't, so I don't have to redesign all that. Well, uh, the original plan of demounting the uh, front tires at home did not go very well. These tires seated up really hard too. I mean, they are ATV wheels, so they're kind of a beadlock um, design. So they're made to hold on to the tire even when there's no air in them. 
So, of course, they don't want to come back off and not having a tire machine to break the bead or any, really any way to break the bead effectively. We tried putting them in the vise and uh, that didn't work. So we resorted to coming down to work to use the old tire machine that kind of works. It got decommissioned from doing car tires and now just does random stuff every once in a while. So see if we can get these things broken loose and swapped out. just uh, started by doing it that way, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Way easier. I mean, it's not that far to just drive down here and uh, do this real quick. So, yeah, we'll get these things swapped out and uh, then we can go back and throw them on. So, quick little size comparison now that we got one of these new ones mounted up. Um, yeah, a little bit shorter and uh, a little bit narrower. I mean, you can kind of see the uh, stretch of the tire. I don't think it looks too stretched. I mean, they are a six inch wide tire going on a six inch wide wheel, so I guess it's not the worst thing ever. Um, hopefully these guys fit. I think they'll be better, worst case, It'll at least look better having a little bit smaller tire on it, and even if I have to rebuild that front end, um, this size tire will be a little better as far as looks go, and it'll make it easier to rebuild that because I won't have as much tire to try to clear. <laughs> Uh, hopefully you can hear us. There's a little bit of a uh, lightning and thunderstorm and a uh, little bit of rain. So, I mean, that's really good because we haven't had a lot of rain here this summer. So it's nice to finally get some. But uh, we got the tires put on and this size definitely looks better on here. This side still hits on the frame a little bit. Um, also, the geometry is wrong for the strut setup, so we're gonna be redoing some of that just with the lower control arm and maybe repositioning the upper mount a little bit. Not as big of a task as we'd originally thought because this side over here is clearing for the most part as it should. We're gonna try to move all of this forward just a little bit on the lower, so then that way as the suspension travels and stuff, we still get a good amount of angle. I mean, really, even right here, that's, I don't know what, like 45 degree steering angle. That's pretty dang good. So even if we end up with that and just try to get a little more clearance here, so we're gonna push this forward, try to fix the uh, steering geometry because currently the lower control arm is mounted incorrectly, but it was kind of just to mock everything up and see where we ended up it binds on the lower ball joint so we end up with only uh, that much steering angle this direction just because of the ball joint bind um, so uh, what we'll be doing is rebuilding the lower control arm to start with and just see if we can kind of reposition stuff do a lot of measuring and uh, see where we end up but good news this tire size is going to work good it's a uh, roscoe approved apparently um, He's happy to be in out of the rain, I guess. Also, forgot to mention, the uh, new shocks are in and uh, it actually has dampening again. So that is a very big plus. Looks like those are actually gonna be good for the weight of that front end. That's, that's pretty yeah. solid. Yeah, I mean, it rebounds to where it should and uh, yeah, I think they're gonna work out really well. So we're gonna start building lower control arms. Uh, we're just gonna modify the ones that are there. So I'm gonna start out uh, bending some tubing on the old Rogue Fab tubing bender. If you haven't already, go check out their website, roguefabrication.com, uh, or roguefab.com, I guess. They, uh, they build some awesome benders, notchers. We use both of those, and um, they also sent us these cool uh, dimple dies. So, Hopefully, eventually, we'll get to the point of where we're using some dimple dies on this thing.
first portion of the control arm there is done and tacked in on both sides. Um, just did a little 25 degree angle bend there and then uh, tacked it in. So basically I pulled the center of the hub forward a little bit to get a little more clearance in the back. Also, we got a large amount of steering angle. <laughs> Definitely not gonna be able to even pull that off because uh, the steering linkage, I don't think it would ever work. It would be a complete disaster of stuff just running into everything. So anyways, um, we do have a good amount of steering angle. As you can tell, uh, as I turn this, the uh, strut kinda does a little wobbly thing. That's just the design of these. Um, these are pretty poorly designed, so as the strut in a straight line goes down, it does not intersect with the uh, ball joint. So as it goes down, it ends up in, it would intersect like down in here somewhere. So it kind of just does a little swing thing. Uh, pretty normal for that since it's the way it's designed. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and chop down these other two for uh, the back ones and get those tacked in and then uh, and then we can set it back down and see how it, how it is. Control arms built for both sides. They're just nice and tacked on there. Um, seem like they're gonna work well. We've got good steering angle and everything still, so that's good. Uh, also, they look way better than the other ones. Um, looks more like an off-road machine now. I kind of hated the other ones originally for, well, the entire time that I've had to look at this thing. I just hate those control arms, so I was kind of looking for an excuse to just build some different ones. And then I realized that the uh, geometry was a little messed up, so it was well worth it. Um, also, we want your guys' input. Uh, we've been thinking about doing a uh, mower deck on this thing, building a custom mower deck out of two mower decks that I have out back. Um, they're both off of a old Craftsman 42-inch uh, mower deck, so I think if we take and uh, maybe combine a couple mower decks, we could have a mower deck that is wide enough for the uh, size of the machine now. So leave some comments down below. Give us some ideas. We were thinking probably power it off of a separate engine, um, kind of like a push mower would be. Just for ease of everything, it would be not really the most practical thing to try to hook it up to everything that is already existing for the drivetrain for this thing. So yeah, comment down below. Let us know what you, what you think about the idea. If you have any good ideas for maybe, uh, who knows, maybe we'll add a bagging system to this thing. This seems kind of uh, like a mower thing to do. So also hit the like and subscribe button if you already haven't. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.